All right, so here's the deal with aromatic versus what's called anti-aromatic versus what's called non-aromatic. And uh, this is, includes Huckel's rule. Uh, and here's how it goes, to tell the difference between those three. If it's aromatic, basically you have a flat ring where everything is sp2 hybridized. sp2 hybridization, hybridization means it's flat, it's planar. Uh, and the fourth thing, really to make something aromatic, is it follows Huckel's rule, which is 4n plus 2 pi. What does that mean? That means n is a counting number starting at 0. So really, all this formula tells you is that if you have electrons in a pi system, aka double bonds, that count up to 2, 6, 10, 14, or any addition of 4 after that, that's called uh, an aromatic system. If Huckel's rule is missing, but everything else is true, we call that anti-aromatic. And then everything else is just not in the aromatic category, so that's called non-aromatic. That's pretty much most molecules are non-aromatic. They're not even in the category. How does this work? The simplest is, take benzene right here. It has two, four, six. You count two electrons for each double bond. It has 6, it's planar, it's a ring, everything's sp2 hybridized. What does sp2 hybridized mean, by the way? The easiest way to tell is that every carbon has three bonds. Okay? Remember the undrawn hydrogen. So, for example, at every vertice here in benzene, there's an undrawn hydrogen. So when I say every carbon has three bonds, meaning it has, in this case, a double bond, a single bond, and another single bond. So three types of bonds there. So if that's the case, or, or uh, sometimes people say three groups. There's three groups, or so three sets of bonds. It's sp2 hybridized. This all fits. Fits Huckel's rule because there's two, four, six. This is aromatic. Okay. Another example here, naphthalene. There's two, four, six, eight, ten. Fits in Huckel's rule, it's also flat, it's a ring, it's sp2 hybridized, every carbon has three sets of bonds with three groups. This is also aromatic. Here's an example of something that's not. This uh, cyclobutene ring. There's two double bonds, two, four. Uh, notice four is not in what's called the Huckel's rule count. And so everything else is true, it's a ring. SP2 hybridization, um, it's flat, everything fits really nicely there, except this cyclobutene um, doesn't follow number four, Huckel's rule, because it only has a count of four, not two or six. In this case, this is called anti-aromatic. Let's take a look at some more. Here's another one, here's a cyclopentene ring. Uh, it's got two double ones, two, four, so that doesn't fit Huckel's rule, Everything else fits though because it's a ring, everything's sp2 hybridized, everything looks nice. Uh, so this would be another example of an anti-aromatic. Go one to the right here, another cyclopentene ring but with a minus charge. Two, four, and this lone pair adds to the count. So whenever there's a lone pair that can add to the count, two makes something aromatic, it will. So this actually counts two, four, six for that lone pair. Six fits in the aromatic category, so this is aromatic. It's flat, it's a ring, they're sp2 hybridized carbons, everything's set. Let's go right here. This has two four. Um, you might think, oh, four, it doesn't fit Huckel's rule. Everything else fits. You might think this is anti aromatic. However, this carbon right here is sp2 hybridized, sp3 hybridized, because the carbon has four groups or four sets of bonds, four single bonds in this case. So this doesn't even fit in the aromatic category because it's not, really it's not flat. It's uh, not sp2 hybridized. So really this right here is a non-aromatic. It's not even in the aromatic category. Okay, let's look up here. This one, it's a cyclooctene ring with four double bonds, one, two, three, four, or two, four, six, eight. 8 doesn't fit into the Huckel's rule. However, everything else fits. It's a ring, sp2 hybridization. Um, 
Well, so here's the tricky thing about this. Cyclooctene, if it was flat and planar, it would be called anti-aromatic. However, this thing will buckle, which you might not have known that naturally, but when things get to, uh, when rings get about eight or bigger, definitely, and they have double, even if they have double bonds, they're going to start to buckle. And so because this buckles or doesn't lay flat, it's actually in the non-aromatic category. Okay, let's look at another one. How about this one? It's a seven-membered ring. Two, four, six. Now I think six, that's good for aromatic. But what about this? Well, this is also sp2 hybridized. This makes this thing flat. So this would be in the aromatic category. It would have six from the double bond system, six electrons, pi electrons really. Uh, and so this would be aromatic. However, if you look at this one, this one has two, four, six. You might think that one's good. It does fit Huckel's rule. However, this right here, at the apex at this point, this is sp3 hybridized because there's two hydrogens here. It's not sp2 hybridized, so it doesn't fit these other qualifications being aromatic. This is actually non-aromatic, not even in the category because of these extra two, uh, these two hydrogens there. It makes it sp3 hybridized. Knocks it totally out of the uh, aromatic category. So hopefully that makes sense. Those three, aromatic, if it follows these four conditions, there's a rig sp2 hybridized flat or planar, and 4n plus 2 pi system. Um, if number 4 is missing, it's anti-aromatic. Otherwise, if there's more than that missing, it's totally the non-aromatic category.